Okay, let's move on to this weekend's action, the Chicago Marathon. Okay, so my first question, who is the top American male finisher? Connor Mance, Galen Rupp, or if you're really feeling crazy, someone else. This is kind of crazy. When is the last time Rupp finished a race and he wasn't the top American, John? It's never happened in the marathon, right? Ever? In a marathon, it has never happened. But the reason we are asking this question is because he hasn't really done much the last couple of years. We know he's been dealing with injuries. His last three races, 209.36 at the World Championship Marathon in July 2022. That was 19th place. Dropped out of the New York City Marathon on November 6th last year. And then his only race of 2023, 64.57, the 17th place at the New York City half. So you're reckoning with a few things. One is he's 37 years old and hasn't run very well recently. And he hasn't really looked like the old Rupp. You know, vintage Rupp, the last time we saw him, I'd say it was in Chicago in 2021 when he runs 206. Since then, it hasn't been the same guy. So are you taking him or are you taking Mance, who ran 208, 16 in his Chicago debut last year, ran 210, 25 for 11th in Boston this year? I mean, I got to go with Mance. But... World in Eugene, John, 209. It's not horrific. Well, no, he, he stopped to, I think, throw up a couple. Like, he stopped multiple times in that race. So I think that's probably a 208 uh, if he doesn't have these, like, whatever the issues were at the end of the race. So crazy he doesn't have the American record in the marathon with super shoes. Because the game has changed. Sonia Sullivan wrote something this week. Like, no Irish man has run as fast as a woman's world record time in, like, years. You know, women are running 211s. And we're think still thinking dudes' times are good at 209. It's not. I'm sorry. It's like an old 213 back in the day or something. So, but just with no recent body of work, if I have to bet, I'm going to assume it, it's not there. The fact he's running the race makes me think maybe it's there. So, I'd love to hear what you find out at, at the press conference. Yeah, it's going to be, I think, I get, I'm going to have to hear what he has to say. It's hard to make an inte- informed opinion on this because, yeah, like you said, Weldon, we just don't know what he's been up to. If he comes up to the press conference and says, hey, my training's been great. I haven't had any setbacks. I've been able to do everything I wanted. Then I'd be like, all right, I think I'm going to pick Galen Rupp. But I talked to Ed Eyestone yesterday, who's Conor Mance's coach. He's saying, hey, Everything's been going great for him. This is the best shape you know he's been in for a marathon. He's thinking like 206, 207, a time that sort of time it could be realistic for Connor if on a good day. That's gonna take a very good Galen Rupp to beat. So I'm gonna be interested to see what he says and if he's how interrupted his training has been. Because if he hasn't been able to do everything he wants in training, I just don't see him beating Connor Mance. John, John, did you find out what happened with New Haven Gate? I did. And Ed was like, yeah, look, they kind of decided they were clear of everyone else. They didn't need to go to the well. He kind of was like, it's not what I would have done, but you know, they were fine with it. They're training partners. They do everything together in practice. So yeah, it was that did sound like the fix was kind of in on that one. Thank you. I want everyone to apologize who criticized me when I said that. Formal apologies. Please email Weejo, W-E-J-J-O at Let'sRun.com. Thank you. That's actually a big story. We probably should have led the whole podcast with this. In case you don't know what we're talking to, the New Haven US at the US 20K Championships, Weldon watched the end of the, of the finish, and he thought it looked like that Connor Mance let his teammate Clayton Young win the race. Weldon put that out on Twitter. People blasted Weldon, and now it's been confirmed by the coach. It, it is amazing how myself and my genetic equal – we can pick up things from not even being at the race. The, the average idiot at the race has no idea what's going on. It's just, God gave us a gift. God gave us a gift. Robert isn't including you in the average idiot category, by the way. If you're listening to this podcast, clearly you're not an idiot. So just didn't want to have that come across as an attack. Robert, Mance or Rupp, what are you thinking? Well, since we haven't talked to Rupp, it has to be Mance. But if Rupp finishes races, I think he's beaten him. So... I think Rupp's either going to drop out or be in good enough shape to beat him. I don't see Rupp going through and running 210. He's already got the qualifier. I mean, 
I will point out in 2022, Rupp ran 209 while walking in the middle of the race with nothing from March until the race. So it wasn't like, I'm like, oh, he should have run some prep races. I just think 37, he's probably hurt. And it's going to be man's, but I kind of, it's weird. I was never a big Rupp fan, but now I'm kind of like, oh, I want him to stomp these guys if he's actually in the race. Which makes it more interesting. I'm looking at the field here. Also have my hard copy of the 2002 Chicago Marathon Media Guide. Wait a second. Wait a second, Robert. You're wrong that Rupp has the time. He does not. The qualification and ranking period for the 2024 Olympic Marathon is from November 1st, 2022 to April 30th, 2024. Rupp's 209, that was in July 2022. So he needs at a minimum to finish this race and run 211.30. Though I guess if you... He probably will run that time at the Olympic trials if he was to finish in the top three, but he, he's not all set. Oh, I mean, he has the time. Oh, I thought I mean, he, I mean, he has the time to qualify for the trials. Oh, good point. Oh, yeah. So Rob needs a 1130. He, he's got to do that. He, he needs that. To get that out of the way here. So I take back what I say. He's either going to beat Mance or not. I, I think he'll run under 1130. I think he actually, I'm going to change my pick. I think, I mean, I think he's going to lose to Mance. But if we hear that, if Rob tells you on Friday everything's perfect, I'm picking Rupp. Yeah. But also, what about the 208 time? Well, the, Galen Rupp could help out American marathoning a lot by running 208.10. And I do think if he's in shape, that's something he's going to go for. I was talking to Ed Eystone, and he was saying, yeah, you know, they have to finalize these pace groups and figure out what Galen wants. You know, he's going to have a say in that, obviously, so will Mance, but. Like Rupp, if I if I was Rupp, I mean my, I don't know, Galen Rupp, his the, his attitude to these things, he's usually not going half measures, but he's not he knows he's not going to be able to beat Kiptum, right? So I don't know, it'd be interesting how he plays it, but I think Galen Rupp, if you're in, if you're in good shape, trying to get that Olympic standard should be a, a big priority because he doesn't have it, and it would also put the United States as a whole in a better position for qualifying athletes for Paris. In case you don't know, the U.S. has no one under the 208.10 standard, but Connor Mance's world ranking is high enough. He's going to go. So it doesn't really matter if he breaks 208.10, but if you're an American fan, you want to see Rupp break 208.10, definitely, because even if he runs like 208.20, his world ranking is not going to be high enough, I don't think. Well, it might be eventually after the trials, but um, or you want to see someone like Princeton's own alum, fellow alum, Matt McDonald, who's got a pretty good ranking, he needs to run like 208 or 209. And also you need the bonus points. So if you finish like eighth, it's like 45 bonus points, which is like, which is like the equivalent of taking two minutes off your time. So you definitely want to be in the top 10 and run close, you know, to that standard if you've already got a pretty good ranking. But it's kind of interesting, John. You know, people say everything's so much different than it was back in the day. I've got my 2002 media guide here. I just looked at the press release from this year. There's 16 guys under 210 in the race this year. 2002, there were 15 guys under 210. Khalid Kanuchi, Paul Turgot, many others. Marathon debut for Alan Culpepper, Ryan Shea. Two very prominent men were pacers in that race. Someone by the name of Weldon Johnson and Rod DeHaven. Rod Haven, of course, was an Olympic team member. What about Brian Sell? Who made the 2004 Olympic team? He was my backup pacer. Well, thank you for that trip down memory lane, Robert. Now, returning to 2023, women's side, this, this is a stacked field from an American perspective. 